Hi everybody, this is Frank with Tiny Plastic Spaceman, and in this short video I'm going to show you how to disassemble and reassemble your Badger Renegade Chrome Airbrush. Um, this video should uh, be applicable to pretty much all of the Renegade uh, series of airbrushes, so hopefully you'll find it helpful. Alright, so first thing you may notice that I've got this, um, this is basically a forerunner of the High Roller Trigger which is this trigger right here. Um, so don't be shocked or alarmed or anything like that. Um, it is basically the same thing. It's basically the standard trigger with an extra piece that's laid on top. Uh, I got this from a British guy named Ashley Brayson, who does some excellent, excellent wallet and um, other uh, life painting from uh, uh, just from his home in the UK. So really nice stuff. I'll put a link um, to his videos somewhere up here or in the description as well. So anyway, let's uh, carry on. So this airbrush is pretty much straight from my workbench. Um, I have removed, I normally have a quick disconnect um, adapter, which is something like this. Um, that is usually on the bottom there. Uh, but other than that, this is straight from my workbench. So we're going to take off the paint cup cap. Um, this is helps prevent uh, the paint drying out too quickly and also prevents splashes from getting on your work. And then we've got this protective cap, which protects the needle prongs and the, uh, or the nozzle prongs and the, the, the needle tip. Okay, now we've got just the back end is held on very easily. Everything is finger tight on Badger airbrushes, so it's uh, very handy. And then we've got, uh, just going to hold on to this trigger as assembly here, loosen the needle chuck, and pull the needle out. Now some people do like to pull the needle out through the front, which helps keep uh, uh, paint from getting into the air valve area. I haven't had any problem with that really, unless I've been very, very messy. Um, but you can pull it out through the front uh, by pushing it out that way, and then pulling it out carefully. I like to just pull them out the back. It doesn't really matter either way, I don't think. Um, now that is it for the back of the airbrush. You don't have to touch anything else with the trigger, the trigger guard, or the trigger assembly. Uh, sorry, trigger back plate uh, is what I've been calling it. Um, we turn our attention to the front, and you'll notice um, that I've got a, this is an old t-shirt basically, that I've got laid down. You can use um, a plastic tray or a, an old towel. Um, just to catch the tiny, tiny nozzle that is inside there. So, basically, I normally take off these two pieces, because these are two separate pieces, the prongs and the, the, uh, the nozzle retainer. I normally take them off as one piece, because I found that uh, paint doesn't really collect between the two pieces. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to try and take off just the tip first. So you can see that uh, we're getting pretty small here. And now we've got the nozzle retainer. Now you'll note that it's got threads on the outside. It's also threaded on the opposite side of this, of this, uh, of this knurled centerpiece. So it's a very small piece, so it's helpful to just take note of which way the, uh, if you're unfamiliar with doing this, it's helpful to take note of which way is the front. This is the front, and that is the rear. That's where the nozzle goes into. And the nozzle is this tiny piece here. So if you're unfamiliar with these, that is the nozzle. Now that is the most that you'll generally need to take apart for just general cleaning. Now just for Informa information purposes, I'm going to take the Extreme Patriot 105 and I'm going to show you um, the corresponding pieces for the for the Patriot. This is the new Patriot, came out earlier this year, 2016. And this is just to illustrate how much larger these pieces are for the Patriot series. Can you see there's the nozzle for the Chrome series? or, yeah, the Chrome, Renegade series, sorry, and then there's the Patriot, and then there's the retainer and the tip. So, 
this is why we do this over some sort of fabric uh, table surface. Not over your lap, not while you're sitting at the couch, um, and ideally not over a hard surface like a table or a countertop or a worktop or something like that. So I'm just putting these back on. I took this apart for another video, which you can check out in the up, upper corner right there. And we'll set that aside. And now if you have to do a deep cleaning, such as uh, to let everything sit in uh, thinners overnight or put it through an ultrasonic bath, um, we can take off the trigger assembly very easily. You'll notice that it holds the trigger in place. That's why the trigger's kind of falling apart or falling down. And there's the trigger assembly. The trigger also is loose and so is the back plate. So there you go. Now, let's say we've cleaned everything. We're gonna put everything back the way it was. So you see we've got a slot here instead of a T-shaped opening uh, like on the Badger series. So we need to just carefully put this in and that rests on the back of the air valve. If you look inside there with a good light, you may be able to see a, uh, a circular uh, opening that the, that the curve of the trigger back plate rests on. And then we've got the, you see there's a little dimple at the bottom of the trigger stem. And that sits on top of the spring-loaded center of the air valve. And then we just gently push that forward. And now this, you'll see that there is a, you set that down. This is a D-shaped piece here that goes through this hollow piece. All of these are hollow so that the trigger can go through it. So if this is out of alignment, you won't be able to pull the trigger back and the, tr the needle will not move. So you need to make sure that these D-shaped pieces are all in line like that. And then gently thread it in. Now you'll notice that there's lots of metal to metal contact here. There's no uh, like rubber bushings or anything like that. So that's why you should get yourself a bottle of this stuff. It's uh, the Badger Needle Juice or Badger Reg Dab. Um, just put that on all of the, where the trigger rubs up against the back plate the, and on the threads of this here. Um, and also where that D-shaped piece comes in contact with the back plate. So you, basically just get nice smooth uh, lubricated surfaces. Now I'm just testing that that D-shaped piece is in alignment and I can pull that back just fine and even press down to get the, uh, the airflow. Okay now again we're just going to continue putting it back together. We've got the nozzle very carefully. It's a very small piece remember and remember it's this deep side goes towards the the air uh, the airbrush body this shallow side goes towards the front of the airbrush and then we gently put that on make sure we don't dislodge anything now remember the needle the the threads on these nozzle pieces are very very fine so if you're not sure that you're uh, not cross threading it you can turn it anti-clockwise or counterclockwise until you feel a click and then you can start turning it clockwise or uh, to the right, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Remember. So I'm going to do the same thing again with the uh, this needle tip, because these are much finer threads than on the uh, the Patriot series. And now we've got the knot, uh, the needle. I'm going to gently thread that through, and then just press down on this to make sure that it goes through the trigger. And then we're going to look for it to come out the front. And then just just gently press that while you turn the needle chuck. And that's it. You don't have to really crank it down. You don't have to use any wrenches or anything like that. Remember, everything is uh, finger tight. So there we are. That is the Renegade Chrome. Um, there's also all the Renegade series are basically put together the same. Uh, 
So there you go. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have, please give us a like, uh, subscribe down below. If you have other Badger airbrushes, you can check them out um, at the links that are up here. And um, please check us out at uh, tinyplasticspaceman.com. We've got an Instagram, we've got a Facebook. Um, so all the links are up there in the uh, on the screen and also in the description down below. So once again, this has been Frank with Tiny Plastic Spaceman. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.